Most young adults don't do these three things before moving out of their parents' house, and that's why you hear about a lot of them having to move right back in with them. In this video, we'll make sure that isn't you. So the first financial habit you need is set your financial goals and achieve them, aka do exactly what you say you're going to do. And here's what I mean by that. One of the first things I noticed when I first moved out of my parents' house was I was overcommitting to everything, and as a result, I wasn't really able to deliver on anything that I told myself I was going to do. For example, I was telling myself things like, I'm going to save six months worth of expenses without doing the math to see how much money I would have to save to get to six months worth of expenses. Then I would tell myself, I'm going to make a thousand extra dollars in passive income per month without first finding out how to even do that. And last but not least, I told myself I'd pay off $30,000 in student loans without having a strategy to do so. And at the time, I had accomplished absolutely none of that. I'm talking no traction in any of those three things that I was talking about whatsoever. But I expected it to somehow all be done within the year. So I want you to do the opposite of what I did. This was back in 2017. I want you to get into the habit of writing down what your goals are. And all I want you to do is just take your phone and in your notes app, write down the things that you need the most and the things that you want the most. This is a very simple thing to do, and I'm not going to have you write everything down just off the top of your head. I actually made lists for you, and if you have things you want to add to that, you can add to that. I'm going to put it on the screen right now. All you have to do is take a screenshot, and the cool thing is if you do take a screenshot, if you have an iPhone, you can actually copy and paste from the picture. It's really cool. That way, you spend absolutely zero brain power on making this list, and you can start applying what I'm saying immediately. So we have needs, transportation, groceries, clothes, savings emergency fund, paying off debt, health insurance, car insurance, household supplies, pots, pans, etc. Cell phone bill, internet bill. You could argue about the last two, but we live in an internet based cell phone world. So kind of need, you kind of need those things nowadays. You'll probably want things like pets. I have a cat. She's actually on my bed right now. Luckily, she's not moving around acting up. Anyway, another one would be going out to eat, gym memberships, home upgrades, such as bigger TV, better appliances. Travel, going out slash nightlife, so think concerts, movies, comedy shows, stuff like that. Now, I literally just did half the battle for you in creating the list. If you want to add more, add more. But something else that will add to this is if you were to click the link in the description after you finish watching this video and actually downloaded my free move out guide, which shows you everything you need to know and more about moving out. But when it comes to moving out of your parents' house and moving out on into the real world, as they call it, Half the battle doesn't cut it. So here's the other half for you. And this is a little bit of how to become financially stable before you even move out of your parents' house. That is the game-changing piece of advice that will keep you from having to move right back in with them. And that advice is you need to put prices next to these things that you need and next to the things that you want. And when you do this, you'll find out a few things that are really cool. For one, some of the things you need and want don't actually cost that much and nothing that you put on your list is completely unattainable. And two, in order to reach all of these goals and get all these things that you want, you're going to actually need to plan and break down these goals into very simple bite-sized pieces. And I mean one at a time. That way you won't end up like me, frustrated, not knowing why I'm not getting anywhere, feeling like I'm behind in life. All because I told myself I would do certain things, but then didn't do anything. That's what I call about useless. But on a serious note, this is how you see what's required. So I know you all know somebody who always says they're going to do something, but then has put in absolutely zero action to do that thing. And it might even be you. And you might have the ambition to do it, but then you don't quite think about exactly how you're going to get there. This is how you do it. Once you put a price to your goals, you are putting a face to a name. That's the first step. So for example, you want to save six months worth of expenses. How much money do you spend a month? Now, once you got that number, I want you to multiply it by six. Now, I want you to look at how much money you make per month and how much money you're able to save per month. That's going to tell you exactly how long it's going to take for you to save six months worth of expenses. And you know the reason I gave you that example is because I actually recommend that you save six months worth of expenses before you move out of your parents' house. But another question you should be asking yourself is this, how can I save more money? And that's the thing, that's what you want to be asking yourself all throughout your financial journey, whether you're with your parents or you're not with your parents. You want to keep asking yourself these questions because there's little adjustments you can make to save a lot more money and have a lot more money. That's what I talk about a lot in my wealth journey videos, where I talk about my own personal wealth journey. 
But if you have goals of paying off debt, building your first emergency fund, investing your money into the stock market, or, or even putting a down payment on a house, it's the same exact mindset for all of those. You need the same skill to reach your goals in all of those. And so when you're pursuing these goals that you just wrote down or copy and pasted from the screenshot you just took, you just want to choose one goal and then ask yourself, how much money can I commit towards this goal per month? And that's it. Once you come up with that number, go for it with everything you've got. And the way you do that even faster is by following habit number two, and that's increasing your skill set so that you can increase your income. If you want to be super successful and have a lot of money when you're like 25, you want to definitely pay attention to this part. It is you have to constantly get better at what you do at work or what you do outside of work. And this is going to ruffle some feathers a little bit, but I'm just telling you the truth from my experience and what I've done. Right now you're young, ambitious, and you have fewer responsibilities than you will probably ever have once you become older. So now you have the time that you can spend. Usually if you don't have money, you have time. So I would recommend using that time to put in overtime at work, to spend extra time learning the skills necessary to move to the next level at work, going for promotions, going to work every single day, not missing a day unless you're sick or there's an emergency. And these are basic things, but a lot of people don't do them. But then also doing stuff like building a side hustle. Those are all things that I've personally done. And yes, part of it does suck. But the results that come out of it, you can't replace like the amount of suffering that you do when you're pursuing those things. And then the rewards you get afterwards, they don't even compare. Like the suffering was nothing compared to the reward that I got for working 80 plus hours a week. And I'm not saying this because I want everybody to just be workaholics or anything. That's not what I'm saying. But I am saying for a short amount of time of your life, for two to five years, if you really put your head down and you start learning as much as you possibly can with the free time that you have, you will be something else. People will be looking at you and all like, how are you this young? You're already making six figures. And I've had that literal reaction multiple times at this point. So I'm telling you what I know. And I encourage you to really, really think about this because it is out of the norm. It's not what most people do because other people live different ways and different lives. And I'm not judging them and I don't have any ill feelings about them. But there's a big difference between what I'm saying and what most people do. What most people do, work for the weekend. Then when the weekend comes, you're living it up on Saturday. You're getting depressed Sunday as the weekend comes to a close. And now you're thinking about Monday again and you have to go back to work. And that's how a lot of people live. I'm not knocking it. That's actually a fine way to live if that's what you want to do. But I just wanted more for myself and I wasn't comfortable doing that. So I got comfortable being uncomfortable because I realized one thing when I was younger. This was back in 2017 when I was 21 years old. And what I realized was this. If you do what everybody else is doing, you're going to get what everybody else is getting. I didn't want that. I wanted extraordinary results. And this is how you're going to get them. Spend some of the free time that you have. You don't even have to spend all of it, but dedicate some of your free time towards building a skill, getting better at your craft, or working on a passion project of some sort that you know can generate some money. And I've actually done everything that I'm saying in this video, and these are two ways that I did exactly what I said. While I was at work, you know what I'm saying, I got placed into several different opportunities to work over time and at first it was you know voluntary but then it got involuntary very very quickly as the demand started to pick up at work if you've worked a full-time job i'm sure you know exactly what i'm talking about especially if overtime was available and as you could guess during the time i was making a lot more money but being in there so often you're learning stuff like double as fast as you would be because you're working every single day or at least in my case i was because i was literally working seven days a week and yes, it sucked. There was nothing fun about it. But I'll tell you what, ask me, does it suck now? No, it doesn't. Because just five years after that, I was making double what I was making for a base pay at my previous job. And that was without the overtime. That was with having three to four days off per week. That's why I'm telling you this stuff is extremely important. But anyway, the second way was building this lovely platform that you see me on right now, helping people out, doing what I love to do. That's something I love to do for a long time, but specifically around what I told you at the beginning of the video, that's helping people move out of their parents' house. That was a big pain point that I had. I wanted to help other people with that. But after you move out of your parents' house, I know that you need to actually be financially stable and get to where you want to be because there's no fun in moving out of your parents house but having nothing to show for it not having any savings and being stressed the heck out all the time i don't want that for you and of course building wealth 
So all these three tie in together beautifully to help you move out and build wealth and build your first six figures and then second six figures and then all the way up to a million. That is what the goal is for this channel. And I actually show my own journey of me doing such a thing. But this channel didn't start off like that. At first, I didn't really have much direction. So I would spend my entire weekend sometimes just researching popular topics on YouTube or, or looking at things that I felt were interesting that I could help other people with that I had skills in. And eventually I just started talking about personal finances and I learned that I was actually a lot better at personal finances than I thought I was. And I started helping more and more people and reaching more and more people. And that was how I found that. But I never would have been able to create something like this channel or any of my services or write my book or do any of the things that I've been doing over the past five and a half, six years or so. I wouldn't have been able to do those things if I hadn't buckled down and built a skill set within YouTube. And I wouldn't have been able to build the lifestyle that I have now if I didn't buckle down and build my skill set at work. So I got to the point where I was skilled enough to get paid such a salary, which was more than double of what I was getting before I was getting the overtime at my previous job. And having the work-life balance of having three to four days off. I mean, you really can't beat that. So this is why I'm saying it. I'm giving you a real life example. And I'll tell you one thing. Betting on yourself is one of the best things you can do for yourself. And people are going to definitely bet against you. But the way I see it is this. Betting against me is crazy. And you got to have that same kind of attitude and prove exactly why it's crazy for them to bet against you. And I'll tell you another thing. There is a dark side to this. Building skills is not the most fun thing in the world. You're going to feel bored out of your mind sometimes. But you have to keep reminding yourself that you're doing something meaningful. Not just for yourself, but for the world, for society. But this isn't for the faint of heart. This isn't something that you can just do one week or two weeks and then just quit because it was too hard or you didn't understand something or you didn't see any traction. You're not going to see any traction for a long time for some of you. And that's how I was. And I don't have an issue with it because now there is traction. Now things are moving in the right direction. And that's all you really need to see. Are things moving in the right direction? Are you growing as a person? You can't be about soft doing this mess. But you want to know what the most important, absolutely critical thing that you have to do before you move out of your parents' house is? You need to learn how to track your expenses and get good at it. Because if you can't manage the money you make, it won't matter how much money you make at all because you'll spend it all. There's a lot of things you can do right now to become financially stable. And this is 100% the most important thing you can do because you'll become so far ahead of your goals, so far ahead of your peers who have similar goals to you, specifically when it comes to your personal finances, because you would have already mastered the hardest part of your personal finances. And that's the boring stuff, like seeing how much money you made compared to how much money you spent and doing that every single week and then every single month and then making adjustments, adjustment after adjustment until you're able to save more, get out of more debt, invest more of your money, put more into your emergency fund or whatever goals that you have are. Yes, it is boring, but it's meaningful. But unfortunately, as an adult, sometimes you have to do some boring things in order to unlock an endless amount of opportunities to have as much fun as you want. I mean, you tell me, would you rather deal with the boredom of being responsible and getting your life together well ahead of time? Or would you rather deal with the consequences of living it up and having as much fun as possible, but not planning your future properly and then dealing with those consequences of not being able to pay your bills on time and constantly being in an endless stream of debt and not being able to buy the things that you or your family wants and deserves? You tell me and I'll give you a bonus tip since you're still here. I appreciate you. So here's a bonus tip. When you do these three things, you start to win at life. And when you're winning at life, things seem a little easier. Life gets a little better. Food tastes a little better. You're a lot more relaxed and calm and it puts you in a position to continue winning. Now you can go from saving to investing, going from earning $50,000 a year to $100,000 a year. And once you start saving and investing, once you hit that income range, guess what's going to happen to your net worth? It's going to jump from $100,000 to $300,000. But check this out. I have one more thing I want you to do. I made this really good video called you do not need a lot of money to build wealth. That's going to help you master number three, which was how to track your expenses. You can check it out up here.